welcome back to Rich Bad Creations. Today I'm going to make a Dementor statue and I'll try to not spend too much time on the sculpt. So I think this is a perfect project if you're new to sculpting because you're going to cover it up with a lot of fabric in the end. So without any more babbling, let's get started. At the beginning of the project, I just took a barbecue skewer and I attached some hefty wire to it to make a temporary base because I knew that I wanted to make a proper base after I was done with the sculpting of the Dementor. Then I used the same wire to make some hands or like arms, like a mock-up for the body. And I did also make a kind of elongated spine tail that they have if you look on some reference pictures. So then I was just covering that with a base layer of clay, trying to figure out the way it, I wanted the figure to be positioned. And then after I was done with this base layer, it was to put that in the oven for 30 minutes and to prepare for the more detailed layer that was going to be on top. The dementors are quite thin, so try not to add too much clay on top. Uh, or on any areas actually just try to keep it at a minimum because after you added the fabric later on it's going to look a little bit thick so try to just make it as skinny as possible Then this is where I've already baked it once and now I'm just adding on more hip bones and I'm going to start adding some spines or like, I don't know, the vertebrae. I love vertebrae. Just after my recent project, this was just something that I was dreading. I was like, oh no, no more spines, please. But anyways, I added those and I made a little rib cage quite simple and I didn't really want it to be super detailed but I wanted something that was detailed enough that it would show through the fabric later on so then I was just adding that to the figure and you don't really have to be super detailed just make sure that you add it on properly so that it does stick to the layer that you already made I was just adding this piece of clay over the back so that I could add the spine on the middle of the back and some shoulder blades, rib cage. I don't even know what half of this stuff is called. But um, yeah, just having that layer makes it a lot easier to add all the small details without it falling off. Because there's always that chance if you add on a piece of clay after it's baked, you probably should make sure that it's a thick enough layer so it sticks properly. I've never had any issues with my clay falling, like the pieces falling apart after baking. But of course you need to keep that in mind that the polymer clay is fragile. So it's not a toy, it's a sculpture that's meant for decoration. So yeah. Lastly, for the torso part, I add a little bit extra for the shoulders so that the shoulders pop a little bit later on. For the hands, it was pretty much a basic flat little circle. Then I added five small pieces of clay for the fingers. I just squeezed that onto the arms and just worked it back and forth until I found something that I was happy with. After I was done with the hands, I moved over to the spine looking tail. And of course I could have gone really detailed and added each individual spine, but I figured that this is probably not going to be that visible after the cape of the Dementor is added. So I just took a piece of clay, rolled it out and just 
rolled it around the spine and just squeezed it on so it just made small little ridges instead of really detailed spines and I don't really regret that decision because it would have been so much work for nothing if I decided to go the long route. The last sculptural part of the sculpt, <laughs> sorry about that one, uh, is the head. The head was really a ball of clay just added on to the support that I made in the first round of clay. Then I just made sure that the neck was smoothed out really well because this part is something that is going to be visible in the end product. I probably could have made the curvature of the neck even more protruding because I did feel that his neck looked a little bit flat in the end. But I made sure that the neck was something I was happy with and the mouth because I wanted a Dementor where you can actually see the mouth in the end. So I just made sure that the, I don't know, the chin, mouth and that area of his face was looking pristine or good looking. Then after that, I was pretty much ready for the last time in the oven, or the project was, I'm not going in the oven, heck no. Um, but after that, I was actually ready to paint the project. For the layer of paint, I just added some silver mixed with white, black and grey, just to make this kind of translucent, shiny looking skin, because I just thought that the silver would make it look a little bit fleshy or sweaty or, I don't know, gross looking. So that's what I did on the entire figure and you know what Dementor, you can suck on this, suck on this pencil instead, instead of nice human beings, thank you very much. But anyways, I was mixing some of that base paint with some black in all the crevices just to make it a little bit dark and just adding shadows all over the figure. Then I went over with a layer of really grayish beige color in the end to make it look a little bit more like a skin or a really thin sickly skin color. Then I finished off by making some veins with some blue that was really watered down and I did also add some red some places and that was pretty much it for the paint job. For the textiles, I just had this really thin cotton cloth in black and I just tried to measure out the rough size of the pieces that I wanted. Then I made some small little armholes that I was dressing him up and he looked kind of cute at this point and kind of like Voldemort at some stages actually. But I was just making sure to pull and drag that fabric really tight on the back so that the rib cage would be visible from the front. And then I was just really winging it throughout the process by adding on pieces, cutting off pieces, and just looking at reference pictures, trying to make it all fit and come together quite nicely. So for the arms, that was pretty much two half circles folded in on the back. And then I just started gluing that on and finding the positions that I wanted the sleeves to have. Once I was done with the sleeves and the general cloak, I began adding some small pieces because it was kind of gaping holes a little bit places here and there. After I was done with the arms and the cloak, I began to add the hood of the cloak. And first of all, I just started with a long piece of fabric. Then I just glued it on the back of the head and worked myself to the front of his face. Then I was cutting off pieces and just kind of gluing it on the entire face. Rather than having one big piece, I wanted to glue on a hood after this. So when I was done attaching the cloth to the face, I made a tiny little hood 
by making a square piece of um, fabric which I glued on a piece of wire to so that the front of the hood could be folded or I don't know bent into a position that I thought looked cool so that's what I did Finally, for the fabric part of the project, I just started cutting up strips into all of the fabric that was hanging off. I had already done some adjustments by cutting off excess fabric at the bottom, but I was just cutting strips all over the figure and making some holes that I was just dragging to make it look like it was really worn and, I don't know, worn out. I just wanted this gritty feel and just making sure that the cape was sort of going in every which direction. The last step of the project was to make the stand of the figure. I just cut out two different sized circles from the polymer clay. You could probably use a wood stand as well, but I just had polymer clay so it was very handy. So that is the finished project. I hope you guys enjoyed it and as always leave a comment down below if you want to say anything to us. I love or we love reading your comments and we try to reply to as many of them as possible and until next time thank you so much for watching.